Hi guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So today we're going to be revisiting one of my kind of old favourite units, the Javelin Sergeants. So I've done a few videos on these guys over the time. They've always been my favourite Javelin unit, even though a lot of people always tell me that the Imperial Javelins are better. And, you know, I guess each to their own, different people prefer different units and they perform differently. But for me, Javelin Sergeants have always been my favourite they're kind of always the one I enjoy the most. So kind of what are they all about? Well, they're all about javelin volleys. And that's where they actually differentiate themselves most from the Imperials. They actually have a reasonable chunk of ammo. Um, so that means that they don't do so much hero killing. Although, in reality, you get a volley into the face of an enemy hero and they will die pretty quickly. Um, but unlike the Imperials where, you know, it's really that higher damage, but they only get sort of two or three volleys. These guys get five or six volleys, but they also have more block breaks and so they're more effective at killing units. And the damage versus units is actually really quite high. You know, you can be hitting sort of three, four, five K per javelin. And with a 24 stack unit, it means you're throwing quite a lot of damage per volley. So I've been going down the top line, uh, predominantly for things like the javelin damage increase, the block break you've got down here. A um, little bit of jet javelin accuracy, okay, potentially not that useful, but you also get the double shot. That means they do uh, one javelin volley followed immediately by another javelin volley. You can see it here in the uh, unit orders. But more importantly, it means you have a targeted javelin throw, a double targeted javelin throw, and a marksman throw. It means you have a lot of abilities to dump a lot of your javelins very quickly. And for me, that's what I like about them. You're effectively giving them a very high burst damage. Some people prefer the bottom line. Mostly a lot of people say because of the heal, um, maybe a little bit of extra ammo and things. For me, that I don't like the bottom line. I don't think the unit does very well at all in combat. As soon as they get engaged in melee, it's kind of game over for me, in my opinion. That's really not what the unit is about. So the self-heal kind of feels a little bit redundant to me. And realistically, the biggest limiting factor is the total volume of ammo. So the quicker I can dump my javelins into that cluster of enemy units, particularly once the enemy starts pushing a section of wall or something, then the quicker I can get the unit going back to the supply point to refill up. And if you're on a supply point, you know, defending a supply, then you can really sort of start to burst some of this damage and things like this double shot are hugely useful. So for me, that's it's all important. So that's kind of why I've gone the top line. Elsewise, I mean, it's a javelin unit. Um, what's the cost of a single unit? A little bit higher, 3,200 3, bronze, but nothing too shocking. Get that topped up while I uh, while I remember to use it. Um, and other than that, there's not really a lot else to say about them. Defensive stat-wise, 9,200 hit points. Okay, nothing special. 600 piercing defense. Do okay against some low-tier archers. They're still going to stack up a lot of bleed very quickly from things like Namcans. 470 slashing defense. Not really going to be doing a lot for them. But anyway, let's hop into some battles now. See how we've been getting on with them. Um, I suppose very quickly, maybe we should just say doctrine wise, I'm still missing one of the javelin doctrines, but I have now got the, the increased damage one by 180, which is really nice to have, as well as that increased uh, piercing AP and piercing damage, which is kind of nice to have, as well as the increased ammo, which kind of makes it. Anyway, let's hop into a battle and see how we've been getting on. I often find they have a lot of sort of average or medium games with these guys, but not all that many really exceptional games. I think that in part reflects the relatively high skill cap these guys have to use properly because there's quite a lot in terms of timing or getting your throws accurate, limited ammo supply, so making use of your abilities at the right time. And that's something that, you know, I don't always get right. I'm far from being the best player, particularly with javelins, but I still do really enjoy them. So initially, I'd got myself killed on the A point with my paladins and I'd just come back in with these jav sergeants. And yeah, things didn't go too badly. Okay, shame we lost the A point. Managed to get up, get quite a few kills. We target a lot of the enemy range there at the back, and we killed quite a bit of stuff for only one javelin loss. But we'd used up ammo, secured ourselves 30 or so kills, so I decided it was time to head back to the supply point. Get ourselves healed up, get ourselves ammoed back up, and try and look for some more units to javelin at. So as we head back down to the supply point, I'm trying to decide, you know, where I want to go next. Because obviously with the A point lost, we're expecting them to push off the wall and push the B point. Normally, looking at the minimap, 
you know, in the bottom, they push to that right-hand supply point first. It's quite an easy one for them to capture, particularly with cavalry and stuff like that, and that gives them a staging post to push out. And then this um, supply point that I'm here at the moment is a little bit harder for them to take, and we can normally make a bit more of a reasonable defence of it. So we go around the corner, there's actually two people here, a glaive. Annoyingly, I missed the, miss the hero jump, and um, some of our friendly Namcans managed to actually secure the kill. It's uh, annoying that I missed that jump. <laughs> but still nothing really has pushed down. So I'm still sort of in this situation where I'm not entirely sure where I want to go. I know, imagine, Evo being indecisive. I mean, who's ever heard of such a thing? <laughs> but yeah, I'm kind of stuck in, stuck in this little quandary of where do I go? And I don't really reach any def you know, definitive conclusion. I just wander around a bit, really waiting for something to happen. I could have maybe started to push up onto some of the walls a little bit earlier, try and look for my opportunities a bit more, and I think that's probably what I should have done. You know, you don't have to actually engage anyone in hand-to-hand -hand with this unit, and I can always pop back to this central supply point to resupply, so I think that would have been definitely the logical thing to do. But as we push here, I'm pushing back out the back side of the supply point, we do get some friendly units starting to go on the wall, and that kind of encourages me to think, well, I might as well, you know, go and have a cheeky little look, see what's going on. So we push up, and there's actually a hell of a lot of shit up here. So I push my unit up, go for my double throw, not particularly aiming anything specific, just in the middle of the cluster. And actually works out really quite nicely. You know, you see the sort of the damage hits we're getting, and we actually rack up, you know, another 10, 15 kills. We do take quite a bit of return fire from some of their range, so I'm keen to try and get the unit back down. And actually, we really start to sort of stir up the hornet's nest we start to get a lot of stuff pushing down the stairs including stalwarts ranged and other units then trying to get my javelins back down to safety get them back to that supply point because they do need a little bit of healing up i can then hopefully stage from this supply point here to get a lot of damage in on you know the enemy units because i'm going to have almost that continuous resupply not quite sure why i did this one or two javelins make it over and we do actually get a couple of random Namcan kills. But I, I could have just pushed the unit a little bit further back and they'd have had a much better angle over the top of that building. So obviously the enemy are now off the stairs and basically on the reverse side of this, this wall. And as we come round they start to come in. This poor jewel blade <laughs> just gets multiple javelins to the face. They're starting to push hard now through this gateway. But obviously a very narrow um, entrance works quite well for me as a javelin unit. I'm very close to my supply so I can keep myself sort of in the fight and I can just sort of keep my damage in. We are getting the enemy archers on the top of the walls though shooting down into the supply along with that cannon they've built kind of on the reverse side. So we are a little bit trapped in. I try and get some return fire with the javelins from here onto the enemy archers. Don't get many but get another sort of three or four of them enough to hopefully make the archer player think about keeping his units there and then as the enemy is still pushing up here i decide that this is the place to be going we need to be getting some damage onto these namcans um these namcans even maybe even a unit of stalwarts you know they are tough to kill but we do get block bl block break well that's a real tongue twister and as you can see actually really quite effective and we're racking up just tons of kills here now over the course of this match you know in every throw we're getting five to ten kills you know, okay, maybe there are units that do more in a quicker space of time, but it's pretty hard to beat when I'm basically not taking any losses. And we're now up to, what, 130 kills or something. And it shows how effective this unit can be. Just trying to hide on the supply point from that enemy cannon a little bit. And as the B point is getting threatened, I felt I had no choice to, to pull out. I pull back in to try and avoid this cav. Javelin can, to some extent, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with cav if you get a good throw off. But... My sort of experience has always been, you know, the easiest way to not get killed by Cav is to not stand in the way of its charge. And so that's always tends to be my sort of approach to it. But we managed, the B point gets secured, I'm a bit late getting there, don't really contribute much. And as I'm heading back, we're starting to get hit by more and more of those archers that are building up on the walls. So I head back just to get myself resupplied up a little bit. You know, there are quite a few units up there. These are Pavis, so these are a tier 5 golden era unit. And we're still able to get a good couple of kills on them in just one volley. You know, in terms of leadership damage, that is really effective. Because when you can start to kill Pavis, which particularly uh, with the epic doctrines we now have in the game, are a very dominant unit, is really well worthwhile doing. 
I didn't think I could uh, effectively get a shot on those condos and it would have just been a waste of ammo, so I didn't bother. But I assumed they were going to go, you know, round the block and either come into the supply point from the back or come round this side street here, you know, that I'm looking down now. And there's that musket player and there are the condos. Unfortunately, they don't actually come down here and take the bait. I go for a random little uh, shot against some of the enemy ranged and I think that seems to have been a good chunk of my kills this matches against enemy ranged players. But as I go to pull back, the condos make their move, and this is an easy unit to kill in this sort of situation. Really clumped up together, very vulnerable to javelins. I've got more than enough ammo, and we can basically just wipe the full unit in a few volleys. And that's why I like the double shot, because it gives me more options to put out more DPS in a shorter space of time. And that, for me, is really critical. We go back to the supply, which has unfortunately been lost. Just get one volley in, my last last little bit of ammo, and then I'm pulling back. Obviously, it's a shame we have lost that supply point, because now the only viable supply point on this map is for me to go further back. Which is obviously harder for me to get to, but more than that, it gives the enemy team now a staging post to start to assault the B point. And so things are going to start to get a little bit harder from here on out, I think. So I'm getting my horse and waiting for the unit to turn up. Not quite sure what this longsword was expecting to happen. Charging into three or four heroes in a unit of janissaries. Maybe he just didn't want to live anymore. <laughs> so I'm kind of looking for my next set of opportunities again. I'm thinking that I'm wanting to get the unit back. I'm thinking they're going to start to push B point pretty hard, you know, very soon. And as I was thinking that, ding, the light comes on and, you know, they're starting to cap. A couple of Keshigs. Um, I kind of thought they were going to do more than they were. They were right on the end of their charge and I didn't hit a single javelin. But there is no one or only one guy on point. So I'm going in. I am um, trying to go in for my volley. Unfortunately, just miss. And there's just too many heroes here for me to deal with. I'm trying to sort of clutch, get a javelin throw off, but it doesn't really get enough damage. And unfortunately, I get myself killed. Immediately followed up by the fact a unit of imp pike comes and pushes straight into my unit. Really a frustrating ending because I feel like I could have done a lot of damage to that imp pike. You know, and almost taken it out before it reached me. I kind of felt that if I didn't push forwards, the B point would have been lost because there were no other real heroes on it. That dual blade was pulling out, so I would have been the only one there to help. I mean, I guess ultimately, maybe it would have been better to, to not suicide because effectively it turned out to be a suicide. But I always think it's hard in that sort of situation of do you try and save the point and hope you can clutch a few hero kills with the javs and that might be able to turn the tide and, you know, by then, hopefully more teammates will turn up and help secure the point. But either way, it resulted in my death at the end of the game. But we're still able to get, you know, 120 kills with the jab, something like that. And it shows how effective they can be, particularly once they have a close or nearby supply point from which they can base. Anyway, that's all I've got time for though on today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, do let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel for lots more Conqueror's Blade content. Thanks for watching guys, and I shall see you all on the next one.